Hallelujah. And things start to change. We have reason to praise Him. The Lord has given us a reason to praise Him. And when we recall, recount, and reaffirm those reasons, it establishes how we function in an effort to move forward. The hymnist said it this way. When upon life's billows you are tossed <laughs> in tempest, when uh -huh. you are discouraged, yes. thinking all oh. is lost, uh -huh. count your many blessings, yes. name them one yes. by one, yes. count your many blessings, yes. and you'll be surprised to yes. see yes. what the Lord has done. Yes. 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 Recalling and recounting and reaffirming yes. the blessings of God in our life brings us to the last way that I am charged to challenge you to function today. And that's in reverencing Him. All right. The blessings of God function, the blessed of God function in the blessings of God by reverencing Him. Yes. I'm in the text. Psalms 112 says this. It continues by saying, who fear the Lord. Do you see that? Yeah. I have to be honest that I tried to doctor this point up. <laughs> I tried to doctor it up so that it wouldn't sound as dreadful as, as it may come across. But the reality is that it is through fear that we learn how to function. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Because <laughs> many of us don't change nothing. <laughs> until we have to. Yeah. Until you just about ready to lose. Yeah. I know I'm going to sit there and I promise you I'll read your mail. I know that's true. Yeah. See, the opposite of faith is fear. And the difference between holy fear and all others is that the fear of the Lord brings us to knowledge. In Proverbs 1 and 7 gives us a conjunction as to how we can function by telling us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. Of all the things that need to be known about those who desire to be blessed and operate in the blessings of God. Yes, we must praise God and yes, we must remember what he's already done. But these things will mean absolutely, positively nothing and make God nothing more than a genie in a bottle if we do not understand that God is to be feared. Yes. <laughs> he is to be reverenced. Okay. He is to be served and worshipped. Yes. Yes. He is not our buddy. Come on. He's not the man upstairs. Right. He's not my big homie. Right. He's God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know we live in a day and age where we want to be so familiar with everything and everyone, but let me be very clear about making this point. Because no matter how I tried to wiggle around what the text says, mm -hmm. it said to fear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And the more I recognize who he is, it shows me who I am. Now that might sound a little off if you are self-inflated. <laughs> if you have delusions of grandeur about how good you are, then you might get offended by the idea that he's God and you're not. <laughs> but when you are good with the fact that he's God, and you are not. Yeah. He's worth being worshipped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me just pause and I'm thankful and put this commercial break in here. I can't tell you how many times that I went out believing that I had the right idea. Yeah. Only to come up with the wrong solution. I know it was right. Bless everybody else out. Because I knew I was right. Stuck on stupid. You can't say nothing. I'm talking about me. <laughs> Choices, decisions, people in my life. Yeah, oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Because what I failed to realize in those moments that God never lost sight of is that most of the people that I thought were good for me that ended up not being good for me were showing me their representative and not their real person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time we took down all that mascara, <laughs> and you changed that wig, uh, <laughs> popped off that leg, <laughs> I was 
was in the middle of I'm going to get you something. I know there ain't nobody else in here. I'm talking about the kid. So I recognize that there are many things in my life that I'm oblivious to. No matter how good I might be to others, I am sober in the way that I assess myself. Hallelujah. He's God. And he's God all by himself. You don't need nobody else. He was God before I got here. He's God while I'm here. And when I'm long gone and don't nobody even remember who this little dude is with no socks on on a Sunday morning acting like he's a preacher. <laughs> He'll still be gone. Okay. In order to obtain any usefulness from any of the blessings we receive from him, it's necessary that we fear God with a holy reverence so that we might be able to attend to the blessings in obedience. Yes. Good stuff. When, when this is not established, the blessings of God get abused. They get abused because we do not look to be good stewards yes, of the yes, 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 They get yes. abused because we pay no attention that one day we are going to have to give an account for how we care for everything that he's given to us. Yes. And I don't know about you, but the very idea of having to explain to God Help me, Lord. what I did with what he gave me. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Mm, I don't know about you, but that scares me straight. Right. <laughs> That's better than locking me up with those that are lifers. The idea that I'm going to have to give an account for every blessing that he's given unto me and what I did with it scares me beyond compare. And that's the kind of fear that the text is talking about. You, I don't, I don't know about you, but that causes me to be careful over what I have. For eternal rewards and punishments rest in how we reverence God in the things he has given to us. Can I say that one more again? Again, yeah, one more again. Eternal rewards and punishments rest in how we reverence Him in the things that He has given to us. Uh huh. Hallelujah. Now I'm not going to get into the doctrinal understanding of whether or not you go to hell because you mishandled something. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about whether or not you live in efficiency or magic. Yeah. <laughs> efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> For all of eternity? You just got a studio apartment? Got a mansion was available? What? What happened? Oh my goodness. When we reverence God, it's not unless we fully understand to the extent of who he is that we are able to operate in the blessings that there's one more thing that I want to say about this, and we'll shut this thing down. How we reverence God can also negatively impact what we offer to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we have misinterpreted what he has provided for us, we can move then to offer back to him that which we have mishandled as if it cost us nothing. First mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Samuel. Uh, 15, 21 through 22 says this. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices uh -huh. as much yeah. as in obeying the voice right. of the Lord? Well, uh, to obey uh -huh. is better than sacrifice. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. And the lack of reverence towards the Lord makes us believe that God can be bought. Mm. Mm. God, help me. <laughs> that, that we please him by offering him that which costs us nothing for everything we have and would ever get, he gave to us. So the idea that a sacrifice is greater than being obedient to him is insane. Right, right, that's right. Right. So to function in the blessings of God, we have to reverence him. That means that we have to learn to trust and follow him. That when we don't want to do something or we want to do something else, we do what he wants us to do because he knows what's best for us in the end. I'm bringing this thing in. Luke uh, 22 and 42 tells us this, that when the hour had come, Jesus was praying. The hour had arrived, Ernest, and the text says that the master was 
was praying about what was about to happen. Mm -hmm. But what was about to happen is that he was about to be crucified for our sins. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even though he was sinless mm -hmm. uh -huh. and completely innocent, mm -hmm. the hour had come when he was about to be crucified, yes. but this was the very reason for why he came. Mm -hmm. Yet, what was being asked of him was harder than anything that anybody could imagine. Mm -hmm. What if Jesus... <coughs> had not reverenced the Father. <laughs> Ouch. Where would we be if he refused to do what the Father said and go to the cross? What would we do then with our guilt? <laughs> Where then would our shame go? <laughs> Where would we find an endless supply of strength in all of our opportunities of weakness. Thanks be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is our example. For Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. I'm, I'm done, and, and we're out of here. But but reverencing God does not mean the absence of fear. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Reverencing God is in the face of all that we fear, we trust God more. Amen. 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 And the result is always greater faith. Yes. Jesus said, Father, take this cup from me, yet not my